All right, welcome back to another episode of Guitar Fundamentals on Stitch Method. Please make sure you share and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm gonna admit to you that this, when, when I was debating on starting a YouTube channel, this was one of the first videos I ever came across when I was just looking at like um, guitar lessons on YouTube. And so this I know has been presented on YouTube, but we're going to enhance it a little and show you how powerful of a tool this thing really is. We're gonna talk about two patterns that you can use for rhythm guitar playing that um, once you understand these can offer you so much in terms of um, playing the guitar and music theory. It's really cool stuff. So what we're gonna discover here is we're gonna, we're gonna need four ingredients, four, four ingredients, and they're all bar chords, okay? They are the, what we call the E-shaped bar chord, like this. Some people might call it a six string major bar chord. Whatever you call it, this chord here. All right, we're also gonna need the minor version where we lift our middle finger up, all right? And so we need this guy and this guy. Those are the first two. The second two are the A-shaped bar chord. This is from what we call the cage chord system. Uh, some people might call it a fifth string major chord or and also the minor, which is the A minor shaped chord. So one, two, three, four. All right, those are the only bar chord shapes you know, or not you know, that you need to know. And uh, we're gonna keep on discovering how we use these. So there's two patterns to guitar that are gonna help you, A, figure out the notes on the fretboard, B, what chords go into a key, and C, how to communicate music effectively to other musicians, really cool stuff. So what we're gonna do is let's just start with, um, let's just start with the bar chord here on the third fret, the major bar chord, the E shape. All right, so a key is a set of chords that go together based off of the major scale that these chords come from. That's a, that's a very long-winded approach, but a key pretty much in general, the loosest term are notes that go together quite well. And so we're gonna, when we play this bar chord here on the, on the third fret, this is a G major bar chord. Now, the next chord in a key, check this out. If we start here is two frets up from where we started and then lift that middle finger. And this is the number two chord, the minor chord. Okay, number two is always a minor. So here we have our one chord, play this with me, this is our one chord. Two frets up is our second chord in the key, but it's a minor. Two frets up from that chord, this is now the seventh fret, is always the third chord, and it's minor. So if we don't know what key we're playing in, we have this pattern right now of the one chord is here, played as major. Two chord is minor, three chord is minor. All right, now for the fourth chord, we go to the same fret where we were, for um, the one chord, but we go to the A string. Now we play the major, okay, this guy. Now this, I, just I tuck my ring finger in so you can see it, but I play it like this. All right, so this is the four chord, it's played as major. The five chord is always played as major as well. And sorry, that's two frets up from the four, excuse me, here's your four chord, here's your five chord, and we'll talk about what, um, what this all means. And then two frets up, but the minor is your six chord. So now we have six chords in a key. Check us out, no matter where I start, first is major, two frets up, minor, two frets up, minor. Back to where we started, this is the four chord. Four, five, and six is minor. Okay, so in a key, we have seven notes, and each one of those notes you can form a chord off of. In this video, I am not gonna talk about chord number seven. Chord number seven is a diminished chord, and for us uh, who are starting to learn guitar, just wanna understand how the guitar works, the diminished chords are the scariest ones. They do have a property in music, and I have a video linked right here if you wanna look at what diminished chords are. This stuff here, you can get, if you're interested in playing like 90s rock or keeping it simple, you know, think Green Day, Blink-182, Offspring, stuff like that, this is gonna help you, all right? So let's look at that pattern again, a pattern again, excuse me. The one chord is always major, starting off the E string. Two chord is always minor, two frets up. Three chord is two frets up from the two, it's always minor. The four chord is right next door from where we started. Five chord, two frets up. And the six chord is two frets up as a minor. Now, we know, I know those are the first six chords in a key. Why do I know that? Well, because I know I studied this stuff, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you look, this was a G. So that means that whatever chord we start on here is our key. So this is a G major. Two frets up, okay, fifth fret, that's an A, A minor. Two more frets up, cool, that's a B, B minor. Then we go to the four chord. Look, that's the third fret of the A, that's a C. Two more frets up, that's a D, D major. Two more frets up, that's an E, E minor. 
Hey, Ian, are you telling me that the chords in the key are G of G are G, A minor, B minor, C, D, and E minor? Absolutely they are. You can do this with any note starting on the E string. If I started two frets up on the A, keep the same pattern, major, up two frets, minor. That's the second chord. Up two frets, minor. That's the third chord. Go back to where you started, start on that fifth uh, fret bar shape or the A shape. That's the four chord. Up two frets, that's the five chord. Up two more frets, minor shape, that's the sixth chord. Hey Ian, are you telling me that the chords in the key of A are A, B minor, C sharp minor, D, E, and F sharp minor? Those are the first six chords, uh, excuse me. Yes, that's exactly it. We'll do it one more time in F, right? Here we go. So we have F, second chord, G minor, third chord, A minor, fourth chord, B flat major, fifth chord, C, and um, sixth chord, D minor. Now wait, Ian, why did you say B flat major when some people A sharp? Great question, by the way. That's a great question because you need one of every letter name in um, a, uh, a scale or a key. So if I have F, G minor, A minor, you don't want to have an A sharp because they both start with A. You have to go to the next letter, B flat. All right, so that's a quick little tip. So right now, this pattern here can show you that um, what, like how to easily find the chords in a key. You can find out what chords or what notes go into a specific key, right? The third thing you can discover from this also is if you write a song in a key, and let's just say you write a song based off the key of G, but you go like this, you go. Right? You can say to uh, your fellow musicians, well, it's a D, A minor, C, G, or you can say it's a five, two, four, one in G, right? And that's how you hear a lot of musicians speak. You have five, two, four, one in G. Oh, okay. So one, two, three, five, five, two, one, two, cool. Four, here's the four, here's the one. So if somebody said to you, we're doing um, a two, six, one, three in A, you go, okay, here's my A. Okay, here's my two. The six, two, three, four, five, six. Two, six, one, three is what I said. One, three. And it's like, oh yeah, okay, two, six, one, three, two, six, one, three. And so you can learn what chords go into a key. You can learn the names, names and notes on the fretboard. You can learn how to communicate with um, other musicians. It's a really powerful tool when you know this. I'm gonna show you, this is a long video, isn't it? I'm gonna show you another pattern because if you start up here and you're like, oh my God, you're gonna run out of room. And by the way, if you like this lesson, thank, you, uh, thank Jeff, one of my students who brought this question up and I feel like it was really worthy. And so I'm presenting it to all of you. Um, the next pattern, very, very simple. All right, we're going to start on the A string because like I said, if, if you start up here or here, you don't want to be playing bar chords up here. There's got to be a way to offset it back this way. And there is if you start on the A string. So this pattern uses the same four ingredients. It's just a different pattern. Again, practicing this stuff on Patreon uh, with me will help you out tremendously. We'll play some songs together. All right, and so here's the one, here's the one chord. If I start on the A string with major, that's one. Up two frets, the minor shape is a two. Up two more frets, the minor shape is a three. Okay, so yes, there you go. Make sure I said that right. So you have your one, your two, your three. All right, the four chord is actually one fret up from here, and it's back to major. So when you start on the A string, you have the one chord, the two chord, the three chord, and the four chord all in the same string. The five chord is where you started on the A, but now it's on the E. That's your five, and then two frets up, is your six. All right, you can choose that very easily. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are some other patterns to be discovered, of course, but the cool thing about guitar is that it is a pattern-based machine. And the more patterns you find that you can internalize and enjoy, the more you can figure stuff out. And so here, if we started here, this is a C. So you're telling me, Ian, that the chords in the key of C are C major, D minor, E minor, F, G, and A minor? Yeah, I am. And if I wrote a song that went like this.
would be a two, five, six in the key of C? Yes, it would. And so this type of pattern recognition is gonna help you play songs with ease if you need to play bar chords in the band or you wanna play bar chords. It's gonna help you find the notes on the fretboard. It's gonna help you communicate with other musicians. And so I just wanna present, uh, again, you know, like I said in the beginning, I know this lesson exists out there and um, this isn't anything new to me or to, uh, to people understand the patterns of it, but just knowing that you can get a lot out of it is really cool. So I hope that it brings you some insight. Hope that your playing improves. Thank you so much for being here and uh, I'll talk to you again on another episode of Guitar Fundamentals. Bye-bye.